Please go pro gods. Please only let this Hero 11 overheat half the time instead of all the time when recording this service video. And we're back with another video. Today we're going to be performing a full service on a Fox Factory Series Float 34 Fit 4 Pork. We're going to fully service the lowers, the air spring, as well as the damper. Now, this might look like an intimidating job, especially the damper side for a lot of people. But in all reality, it's not. It's very simple. When it comes to forks, you really should follow the recommended service intervals. Uh, every 50 hours or so, you should service the lowers at a minimum. This is worth your time. It's very simple and it really extends the life of the fork. And it just makes riding, the feel of riding, just so much better every time you freshen this up, right? The air spring side, in my opinion, is just as simple as the lowers. There's not much to it at all. And you could do it with the lowers or you could do it every 100 hours or so, right? Now, when it comes to the damper side, this is a little bit more involved, but not hard, really, right? You just have to take your time and get comfortable with it and you'll be able to get it done in no time flat once you get used to it, right? So it, it just needs a little bit more attention to detail. Now, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a short video and by short, I mean very long. I'm gonna break this video up in small step-by-step -step chunklets. Two reasons. One, just to make the whole thing easier to follow. Two, because of this guy here. So I'm gonna be recording this in 4K60 but this time on a Hero 11, the last time I tried this on a Hero 10 was an absolute disaster. I had to scrap the whole thing. So I'm crossing fingers. Hopefully things go a little smoother this time. To complete this full job, there's gonna be a few tools you're gonna to need as well as some parts, which we will go into next. I'm gonna break this into two sections. Tools that are needed for removing and servicing the lower boot, as well as the air spring side. And then separately, I will do a, I will go over the tools needed for the damper side itself, since there's quite a lot of different tools there. So removing the lower boot. For starters, you're gonna to need to remove the air from the air spring, as well as remove the screw from the uh, rebound knob, right? Well, for the rebound knob, you're gonna need a two millimeter hex. You could use this two millimeter hex to remove the air from the air spring as well, or anything that's easier for you, really. You could use anything for that, but you will need a two millimeter X to remove the screw from the rebound in order to re uh, rebound uh, knob in order to remove the rebound knob, all right? Then you're gonna need two sockets. One of them is a 10 millimeter, one of them is a 15 millimeter with a ratchet in order to remove the bolts from the bottom, okay? And then once the bolts are removed, you're gonna need a damper remover tool. These do nothing more than separate the legs from the inside of the damper and the and the body of the boot, basically, right? So you could get these from Fox, which are expensive. I recommend, just like I did over here, getting them aftermarket. You get them for a lot less than what Fox sells them for, and they're just as good. Uh, you could literally make your own, technically. All, all you need is a coupler to do the same job, or you could take a risk and use like a punch with a hammer, uh, but you better be uh, clamped down if you're gonna do that, right? So I'm just using these tools over here. They make life a little bit easier, right? And you're gonna need a mallet to tap the shafts out of the lower. I'll show you how that looks like when we get into that, right? So then with the lower, uh, with the lowers ready, with the lower boots removed or separated, we're gonna need an oil pan to put the oil in. Okay, once it's all drained, from there you're gonna to wanna to remove the wiper if you're replacing your wiper. Technically, you don't need to replace it, right? Depending on you know how much you use your bike and how what condition the wiper is in. But you could use a regular wrench to remove the right wiper. But the problem is these are metal and you could chip away at the paint on the boot. That's why I use this Ice Tools tire uh, lever tool, basically. It's got a plastic coating on the outside and it works outstandingly well for uh, taking out wipers. I've yet to chip a uh, bottom uh, boot or bottom uh, the bottoms of a fork uh, with this tool, right? So Ice Tools, no affiliation. Um, other 
other companies make similar tools, maybe even for cheaper. This cost me, I don't know, I want to say like seven bucks when I bought it. It wasn't all that much actually. So, uh, but anyway, it comes in super handy. I use it quite a bit. So then, um, once we remove the, uh, the, the, the wipers, we're going to want to get inside and clean the inside of the boots, basically. And you're going to need a dowel to do that with paper towel and alcohol, right? So you're going to go in there and clean it real well. So you will need dowels. So from there, we're going to want to take our foam rings and soak them, right? I use just these little tuppers. They're perfect size. Fill it up with a little bit of oil, let the foam rings that we put inside when we're done uh, to soak. So this way they're ready to be installed, right? So now that everything's been all cleaned, um, we would need to put, we will need to put in the wipers. And uh, you could use a tool specifically for that, right? You could make your own really, I don't recommend it, you can. Uh, you could try and put them by hand. I don't recommend it. you can. These tools are great. Um, I mean, the one thing I like about this push version is that it's real solid. It allows me to install the wiper by hand without needing a mallet to do so, right? So um, you definitely want the right wiper tool for your fork, basically. So this is a 34 millimeter fork. I'm going to be using the 34 millimeter uh, wiper insertion tool, basically. It definitely makes life a lot easier, right? So then when it comes to closing up the fork, we're going to need a syringe to fill it up with oil. It's a different amount of oil on each side of the lower boots, basically. But you will be needing a syringe to put oil in there and put the right amount of oil, right? And then when you're all done, you're going to need a, uh, well, you're going to need a torque wrench to torque down the bolts at the bottom to the specific, uh, to their specs. And then you're going to want to fill it up with air, the air spring side with air again. So you're going to need a shock pump, right? So that's everything that you will need just for the lower boots. But let's say we want to work on the air spring side, right? So for starters, after you remove the air from the air spring at that point and the lower boots, basically, and they're all completely removed, we're going to want to go on back on top with a 26 millimeter hex flat. We don't want it. I think it's chafered, right? We don't want a, uh, um, a socket that has a, 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 a chafered edge on the inside. We want it to be flat as possible or you risk stripping the, the, the bolt. It's real sensitive, actually. So you definitely want a flat socket just so you could see that well. You could make your own. You could buy a socket and literally grind it down, right, if you need to. Or you could buy them already flattened up, right? So you need a 26 millimeter to remove the head of the air spring basically. So from there, we're gonna be taking out the air spring and you could use again, this guy here to take out the air spring to make life a lot easier, right? So then we're gonna to wanna to clamp down the air spring. You're gonna need clamps, right? Uh, in order to clamp down the air spring. And from there, we might need heat to remove one of the bolts that allow us to get to the air spring itself in order to replace a um, a seal inside the, on the inside portion of the seal uh, of the air spring head, right? We might need heat, not a hundred percent. That all depends. So, but what you will need is a 12 millimeter, uh, what you call it, a 12 millimeter, a 12 millimeter wrench to unscrew the bolt in order to be able to move the head and a 12 millimeter crow foot in order to screw in the bolt and to screw in that bolt, you want to lock it down with Loctite red. You could use 271. You could use 277. I'd go with 271. So, or 277, really, it doesn't matter. Whatever you got. So, Loctite red is what you need. So, you'll be needing shram butter or slick oleum or slick honey in order to, uh, well, grease the entire air spring side, right? So, that's pretty much all the tools needed, again, for the lower boot and if you want to do the lower boot plus the air spring. Okay, next let's go into the parts needed for the lower boot and the air spring. If you want to work on just the lower boot, you need the wiper kit, right? And you're going to need it for your fork. So this is for a Fox 34 millimeter lower fork, okay? So you got to make sure you get that one right. You do not want to put, it won't work for you if you get a smaller one or a larger wiper kit, right? So this wiper kit, again, 803-00-945 is for a 34 millimeter uh, Fox fork. Okay. If you work on the air spring, you're going to need an air spring kit or a seal kit for your air spring, right? So in this case, 
It's a 34 millimeter fork. That makes a big difference because they also this is this process works for 32 millimeter Fox floats as well. So for the 34 millimeter 803-00-963 is the rebuild kit needed for the air spring. And one thing I forgot to mention, these are seals. Totally forgot. We're gonna need a pick to remove old seals. And then we're also gonna need, you don't need it, but man, it's gonna make life a lot easier, is this little bullet tool. So Fox makes them. Again, you could get these online eBay for a lot less aftermarket basically. And this will allow us, it's gonna sit inside the fork leg and allow us to put the, spr the air spring head in onto the shaft much easier than uh, without it basically, because you can do it without it, but you, re you really risk tearing that seal on the inside that we're gonna be replacing. And we'll get into that, right? So this bullet tool, I'll put the part number down below. This is gonna come in handy, right? Fox 20 weight oil. We're gonna need uh, Fox 20 weight gold uh, in order to fill up the lower legs with oil. All right, that's pretty much all that's needed for the air side and the damper side. Next, I mean the air side and the lower uh, legs. Next, we'll get into all the damper parts and tools needed. As for tools needed to service the damper, for starters, you're gonna need, again, a 26 millimeter flat socket. Okay, make sure it's not, it's a non-chamfered socket. In other words, it's not angled on the inside. Flat, you absolutely want flat. Super important in my opinion. A two and a half millimeter Allen, that's to take out the screw from the control knobs in order to remove the control knobs. A 19 millimeter wrench in order to remove the uh, rebound shaft from the damper body. And then a 19 millimeter crow foot in order to torque it down when you reinstall it after the service is done. A nine millimeter uh, to remove the, 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 inside the shaft, inside the rebound shaft, there's a really long dial control or dial rod. You're gonna need this nine millimeter in order to remove that. You might need heat to remove that as well, okay? Technically, you would also need a nine millimeter crow foot. I don't have one, I can't find it. I used to have one, I don't know where it's at. Um, to torque it that back down, but that's very low torque. It's like three Newton meters, I think. So you could do that with your fingers basically, right? Close enough. Now, this is important. And this is the biggest pain in the butt about uh, Fox Forks, and I wish they would change this. You need a very, very fine pick and a very strong pick, or at least a fine pick that's strong. I'm using a really thin, uh, flat head screwdriver. It's very small. We're gonna need, in order to bleed. We're gonna need to take out this really small clip that removes the control knob. Uh, well, not the knobs, but the mechanism that the knobs click into. And with that, I use a magnet in order to catch that really small clip. It's a real small, fine clip. It's in a crap spot. Getting it out is a pain in the butt. Uh, but it, when it comes out, it could come out real aggressive, like fly all over the place, literally, almost like a high pressure spring. So what I do is I try and take it out and have the magnet there. So the magnet immediately catches it basically, right? Very handy. I recommend it. If you have a magnet, use it when taking out that clip. So as for the bleed process, you're going to need a syringe. This is their syringe. Uh, this is a Fox syringe, basically uh, a little bit different. Again, not a big fan of it. I, I fundamentally believe that Rock Shock's bleeding systems on their newer forks are way, way, way better. Uh, but you're gonna need a syringe in order to be able to uh, bleed the system. So uh, this one sort of makes it easier considering, but again, not perfect. It is what it is. And that's pretty much, oh yeah, and a torque wrench. So you can torque things down, right? Ultimately, you're gonna need a vise. I'm not gonna put the vise on the table now, but you will need a vise and um, yeah, if there's anything else that's needed, uh, we'll get into it uh, during the job. Again, you need alcohol and paper towels, right? So to clean things up. Uh, and a pan in order to empty out the oil, right? So you need some kind of pan to empty out the oil inside the damper itself when you empty it out, when you open up, uh, when you remove the shaft from the bottom from the damper body. On to the parts needed for the job. 
So to start with five weight oil, Fox five weight oil. You're definitely gonna need Fox five weight oil, okay? So um, that, no question of that. Now, when it comes to the actual seal kits, there's a bit of confusion over here. And I am still not sure which one I need. So I ordered one of each. I couldn't find anything direct uh, using the tune ID of the fork, of this particular fork, as far as which seal kit is actually needed. Now, typical Fox seal kits are 803-00-960, right? Got the damper head and all the other parts that are needed. That's typical. But for this particular fork, it's a 2021, I called up Fox because I really couldn't get a direct answer on this. And they gave me a different part number. They said for this particular Fox fork, 803-01-431 is the seal kit needed. Now, the only major difference that I can see between these seal kits is the head. That's it. Bet you everything else is the same. This is a typical head. These I've seen before. This one here for this particular Fox fork or year Fox fork is absolutely different. So I got one of each. Honestly, I'm not sure which one I'm gonna need. I know that this one could be used for a lot of their forks. I have no idea if this particular fork is gonna use this rebound head and we will find out. So just an FYI on that one, you might wanna double check your actual fork, the year your fork was made even though the instructions and the processes are the same, there were some minor changes here and there, I guess. We'll find out, right? So yeah, just an FYI on that one. But that's pretty much all the tools we're gonna need just for the damper side. Um, and again, you can't get to the damper without removing the lower boots, which means everything I mentioned before for the lower boots sticks. Okay, next, let's start taking apart a Fox fork. Prior to dismantling anything, make sure you clean up the fork best you can, right? So especially in this area, if there's mud or, you know, dirt, which always gets trapped in here and up here, uh, there's always a chance that it's going to fall inside, especially with the lower tubes as you take things apart, right? And just create problems. You don't want any dirt or debris inside the lower tubes. It'll wreak havoc in here and you'll be in big trouble, right? So make sure you clean the bottom because usually mud could pack up in here, right? I mean, I know it sounds like something small, but it's something easy to miss. And then before you know it, you got, uh, you're got you dealing with a pretty decent issue, right? So again, clean the shock and uh, before you start servicing it. So first things first is we need to write down the settings of all our adjustments in order to put them back to where they were when we are done with the service, okay? So I'm gonna start off with the air spring. On the air spring side, open up the cap. If it's stiff, use a plier with a rag to open it up, just so you don't scratch, put a scratch or mark on the cap. Okay, put that on the side. So I'm gonna take my shock pump, put it in here, and we are going to lose some pressure, so it's not going to be 100% accurate, but it'll get us 95 or 99% there. So I'm seeing about 102 PSI, give or take. All right, so let's take this guy out and let's write him down. So again, we do lose air pressure when we put this guy in, so it's not going to be exactly 102, but that will get us close enough for, to start with. So now I'm going to go to my low speed compression and adjust that, right? So turning it clockwise makes it firmer, turning it uh, counterclockwise uh, makes it, well, less firm, right? So I'm gonna turn this counterclockwise. Count the clicks. One, two, three, four, four clicks. Four clicks. And now we're gonna do the same with the rebound, right? So with Fox, going to clockwise on the negative side opens up the port basically allowing for a quicker rebound going to the plus side closes the port right so i'm going to want to open it up we'll count the clicks one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten and ten clicks okay that is done. Now we're gonna to wanna to remove the air 
from the air spring and you always want to remove the air from the air spring. Never forget to remove the air from the air spring when working on a fork. This thing will fly out if you want, if you remove the bottom uh, uh, bolts. So there's a lot of pressure in here. Now grab a piece of rag to cover the, the, the valve uh, in order to stop oil particles from flying out. You do not want to breathe that in, right? And just slowly press on the valve. On it. Oh, yeah. And what the? Come on, man. There we go. Slowly let the air out, right? Compress the fork, make sure all the air comes out all the way down and let go. And now we're good. You can do it one more time just to be sure. All right. Uh, come on. Right. There we go. Okay. Now we got just about all the air out, right? Next, we will be removing the lowers. Okay. To remove the lowers, we need a two millimeter hex in order to remove the rebound knob. Okay. So we're going to take this lefty loosey. Just unscrew it a bit and it'll come out. There we go. Put that guy on the side. Okay, now we need to remove the bolts on the bottom. The air spring side is a 15 millimeter. The, uh, sorry, the rebound side is a 15 millimeter. The air spring side is a 10 millimeter, okay? So I'm gonna start with the air spring side. In fact, you know what? What you can do is just try and clean this up. If you got a lot of dirt down here before you open it up this way you eliminate the chances of you know little dirt particles going inside there we go so take my 10 millimeter and then and loosen them That's one screw. We'll put them on the side. Now we're going to grab our 15 millimeter and do the same. Uh, all right. Now, underneath those bolts, there will be crush, crush washers, right? Real small. Just grab a pick and try and remove him. Oops, on the camera. Uh, might be a little bit tricky. Come on. Not nearly done. There we go. Now he's coming out. Come on. And there's one. And the other one will most likely be on the bolt at the bottom of the bolt of the rebound bolt uh rebound knot okay so that's our two crush washers these will be getting replaced so i'm going to put them over here now we remove the shafts from the boots in order to remove the shafts or separate the shafts from the boots again we're going to need these damper tools right so the two different sizes the smaller size screws onto the air side, okay? Now we don't wanna screw it in all the way because again, the whole idea is you wanna tap onto it in order to separate this shaft in here, the shaft in here from the boot itself, right? So we're gonna screw it in about halfway before we give it a tap with a mallet. You don't have to kill it, just give it a good tap. There we go, that's one. And since I'm here, Again, we don't want to screw it in all the way, right? Or else there's not going to be enough room to separate. So try and get enough engagement in there halfway and give it a good tap. Boom, done. And now we unscrew them. And as you can see, we have complete separation there. 
let's see if we have complete separation here. Yes, we do, right? So now we're ready to remove the lowers. You're gonna want an oil pan, okay? Because technically, oil should be coming out already. As you can see there, oil is coming out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate these guys. There we go, now oil's coming out of the other side. Oops. And done. So now you're going to want to let this rest for a while in order for all the oil to just so just just well come out, right? Um, while that's happening here, I'm going to take a rag and I'm going to clean this area over here. All right. So let's take a rag, clean the stanchions, clean the shafts, take all the oil out, rag, stanchions, and we clean the oil out. Huh. Yep, this stuff with this, the damper, it absolutely needs to get serviced. I could so when you open up the damper and you feel uh uh, it, it doesn't feel smooth when going in and out. That means that one, the seal is shot. Two, chances are oil from the bottom has gone on top and vice versa. So this thing here definitely needs to get service. No questions asked. And I could feel there's actually air. I could hear the air inside. So, yep, time to service it. All right. Next up, we will be removing everything from the boots. So I'm gonna be servicing the boots first. Um, as mentioned, I'm going to do this in sections, okay? Boots, air spring, damper. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak the foam rings in our new bag, right? Before taking everything out of the boot. So I'm going to grab these foam rings. These are the new ones. I'm going to put them in this little tupper. They fit perfectly at the bottom. Just like that. I'm going to take my 20 weight oil and I'm going to cover them. It's going to float on top. Close this guy. And then I'm going to press them in and I'm just going to squish them, let them absorb oil. All right, then I'm going to let them sit in there while I do the rest of this job. This way we know when we're done, we have fully saturated foam rings. So next, we're gonna take out the wipers. Now, <clears throat> in my case, I'm replacing the wipers. You don't have to replace the wipers every 50 hours, okay? Just like you really don't have to replace the foam rings every 50 hours, it all depends on how dirty the rings are. These rings can be clean, uh, saturate them in oil again, and the wipers can be reused as well, right? If you decide to reuse the wipers, uh, you don't technically have to take them out. It just makes it easier to clean everything when you take them out, right? If you decide to take them out and reuse the wipers, one, make sure you remove these springs so you do not damage them, okay? Um, but again, you could just leave the wipers in there, use a pick, to only remove the foam ring, right? I'll show you right now, right? Done, that's a dirty foam ring. And clean everything and then just put a new foam ring after it's been after it's been saturated in oil and put grease on the wiper and you're done without taking them out, right? But I'm replacing these, so I'm gonna take them out. Now, uh, this might prove a bit difficult in here since it's slippery. So what I'm gonna do is take them out of here That's a little high for me, but you could use a wrench to take these out. The problem with the wrench is the metal could chip the paint. This plastic uh, coating on this tool protects the paint pretty well, actually. So in order to take out the wiper, and again, that's an odd position for me. I don't know how much leverage I'm going to get. Uh, basically, you're going to put it under the tool underneath the wiper or wrench, right? And you're just going to basically press down and boom, done, out. 
Ooh, a little bit harder than I thought. But again, I'm in a weird position over here. So now this one has the foam ring in. Just make sure that the tool goes underneath the foam, uh, the, in between, underneath the wiper and on top of the foam ring, right? And again, again, this on a table is pretty high up. <coughs> there we go. Done. Take out that foam ring. All right. Next, we clean the inside of the boots. To clean the inside of the boots, you're going to need paper towels and some kind of dowel. Now, the way I do it is I take a paper towel, wrap it around a dowel, just like that. And I take a rubber band. All right. And I tear open the dowel, the paper towel, just a little bit. All right. So then I take just a little oil in there. Um, I take the boot, plug the hole at the bottom with my finger, spray it down. Right. Come on. I really need to get a new pump head. Spray it down with alcohol. Spray it down real well. All right. The whole idea is to get everything dripping out the bottom. Put a good amount in there. Shake it up and down. Again, remember, keep your finger, uh, uh, have your finger, make sure your fingers plug in the hole. Shake it up and down, be aggressive with it. All right. And then let it all pour out. All right, now do that again. I'm going to break down the oil that's in there. And have it all come out. And have any debris come out with it. And pour it out. That one actually looks a lot whiter coming out. Okay. So then, I take this guy. I spin him counterclockwise. And then when I get in there, I go to the bottom and I spin them counterclockwise in order for those towel edges to get in between all surfaces inside, okay? And if that happens, because obviously my elastic wasn't tight enough, I'll pack them down. Let them soak up everything at the bottom for a little bit. And then I'll take this little dowel, put them in the hole, and push the whole thing out. But I'm going to let them soak up first. Okay. Clean the outside here. So I don't make too much of a mess. Okay. It's sitting in there for quite a bit. There we go. Yep, so that, as you can see, cleaned out quite a bit. But I'm going to use, I'm going to do a towel one more time. All right. Need a better elastic is what it is. So once again, we're going to take alcohol. Had a bit of an overheat issue with the camera. We had put alcohol in there, squished it around, let all the alcohol out, wrapped up our towel on our dowel again. Now we're going to put it in for a second time, spin it around, let it sit at the bottom. Go up and down, make sure we get everything as much as we can, okay? So basically, you're gonna repeat this process for the second tube, same thing, essentially. Put alcohol in there once, shake it up and down, put a lot of alcohol in there, shake it up and down, let it sit there for a bit, empty it out, put alcohol again, shake it up and down, let it sit there, empty it out, and then take dowel with paper and uh, go in there and clean it out once, and then 
spray it again one last time, take dowel and paper, clean it out a second time, and you should be absolutely done. It should be super clean after two times. Okay, I'm not going to record the other one, uh, just to, well, save heat on this guy. And uh, I will be back when I'm done with both sides. Okay, so both sides have been cleaned. Now that they've been cleaned and we can see clearly inside, what you want to do is around here there's a bushing, okay? And you want to inspect that bushing. You're not going to be able to see it well in there, I'm sure. But you want to be able to inspect a bushing and make sure there's no wear marks. If you see any kind of wear marks, like especially major wear marks, that's a problem. Uh, basically, you got bad bushings, essentially, right? If you feel your sh lower boot moving when connected to your upper <coughs> stanchions, right? If When they're connected and you feel play, well, chances are you got bad bushings. So this is a bushing, one set of bushings over here, and another set of bushings right around here on the inside, right? Now on this fork, I mean, it's relatively new fork, really. So the bushings are in great condition. There's not a mark on them. So we move on to the next step of the process. Now, what we would be doing in this case is we would take our soaked oil rings, put them inside, and then put our wipers inside. I'm not gonna do that now. I'm gonna do that later on uh, when I close up the whole fork, right? But if you were just to service the lower boots, you would do exactly what I just did. And then it's a question of just assembling everything, putting the wiper, the new foam ring in, foam rings in, the wipe, new wipers in, or the old ones after they've been cleaned, and uh, then installing everything and torquing everything down, right? Which we will go over later. So next up, we're gonna work on the air spring. I'm gonna put this all on the side. The air spring. Now, um, to work on the air spring, we're gonna need an air spring kit, right? In order to change the seals and the air spring side. So I'm gonna open up this kit. Oh, should have brought my scissors for crying out loud. What a mess. Let's bring everything out on a table and separate it all out. Oh, there we go. All right, so we got, actually I'm gonna put them over here. We got quad rings, we got seals. In fact, this is one of the rings that we will be changing. This is the sag indicator ring, right? I'm gonna put it on the side for now. So for the air spring, first we need to unscrew the head on top, okay? To do that, you're gonna need a flat. You definitely want a flat socket for this, right? You do not want a chamfered socket for this or a chamfered socket for this, right? So you're gonna put it in there, lefty loosey, okay? Now it might be a little bit stiff at first. by hand should and we could look at how much oil is coming out of this side I'm thinking there might be a leak in the seal in the rebound head seal because it's been non-stop oil coming out of that side. Usually oil is always going to spill out from the inside of the tube on the damper side, but for some reason this one seems excessive. I will say I like RockShox's idea much better with the cassette tool. Now what we're going to do is pull out the head and here you can see we have three tokens, right? We're going to take this guy and put them on the side for now since we will be servicing them later, okay? Next we want to remove the air spring. In order to do that there is a retaining clip on the inside and we need to remove it, right? So if you notice in the retaining clip, let me see if I can spin it around here so you can see it better. Yep, there we go. I think you can see it better. So on this side it's flat. 
and it's perfectly against the surface of the, the cylinder. On this side, it's lifted up, right? So it's flat and then it sort of comes out and that's for us to put something underneath like a screwdriver or a pick. So the whole goal here is, well, let's see if I get this in camera, make sure it's in there, is we take a screwdriver or pick, we put it underneath that side and we just flip it out and done. We need this, put it on the side, okay? Now, you can try pulling this whole thing out by hand, which I just did, right? Or if it's really stiff, you could use the tool to get some leverage in order to be able to pull it out, right? So now that we have this out, we're gonna to wanna to clean the inside of the two and clean and replace all the seals on this piece over here, right? So let's get started on that. So first I'm gonna work on cleaning the inside of this guy here, okay? And this is easy. What we're gonna do is grab a towel and just like we did on the lower boots, great. take a towel and stuff them in there and use a towel to clean and push out all the grease that is in there, out. Dunk, that's once. Turn this guy inside out. Spray a little alcohol in him and do him again. Nice and tight. And there we go. And that's the easy part. Oops, still a little bit more grease in there. I'm going to do them again. Grab a new towel. Alcohol. Side out. And push him out. Now we are 100% clean in there. Now inspect them, make sure there's no scratches, no rub marks. This guy looks super clean. All right. Next, we are going to work on the air spring. I'm going to put this guy on the side. First thing first, we're going to take out all the old grease. Okay, slide this down, make sure you get all the grease from underneath here. And make sure you get all the grease from in between here. We'll clean the inside of this one later. Okay. That's pretty much the majority of it. Okay, get clean rags, and now we're gonna start changing seals. The first seal we are gonna change is the piston head, the quad ring, okay? In order to remove this, try not to use metal uh, picks because metal picks can potentially scratch or scrape, right, the plastic. So you could use a plastic pick like this, or uh, you could just use your fingers, really, but we wanna take out the quad ring. Clean the space for the seat. And then we're gonna grab our new quad ring. Now we need to make sure that, first of all, always grease your rings before putting them on. Okay. Now when we put them on, you wanna make sure it's not twisted. Okay, you wanna make sure the surface is flat and this could be tricky because sometimes you can't see it all that clean or clearly I should say. So this one looks good. So that guy is done. Next we're going to use a vise to clamp down the shaft because we're going to have to remove this bolt right after we change this seal, right? So um, technically you don't need it. It just makes it a life, a life a lot easier. You don't need a big one. You could do this with a smaller one as well. So, um, but a 10 millimeter uh, shaft clamp, 
uh, is what you're gonna need to tie this guy into, right? So before we put him in there, make sure that he is free of grease so he won't slip around on us because these Kashima surfaces are really slippery. All right, let's put him in here. Okay. So now there is an O-ring here that we are going to replace. This you can use a metal pick to remove. Any pick that will get in there. There we go. And we are going to replace him with this guy right here, I am sure. Hello? Yes, this is recording. So this is the new one. Take the old one, put it on the side, put a little bit of grease on the new one. And we're gonna slide them down, make sure we don't rip them, make sure he goes in evenly. Use your fingernails to slide over, there we go. And done, he is in there. Okay, now, we're gonna use a I believe it's 12 millimeter to remove this bolt here. 12 millimeter wrench to remove this bolt here. Now, two options. One, you might need heat in order to soften the Loctite red in here, okay? If that is the case, then do not put in the O-ring first because, well, you might damage the O-ring with the heat or you probably will actually. So two, you might not need heat, right? Uh, if you don't need heat, then you could do the O-ring so uh, in advance. So in my case, I probably won't need heat because this is pretty solid vice. And I'm not spinning. All right. are coming out. Hmm. There we are. Can't do it by hand yet. Oh, it is getting easier and yet I can't do it. Oh, there we go. All right. So, as you see, we have a lot of Loctite residual. We have an O-ring down here that we need to replace, okay? So first, we're gonna take out this O-ring. Use a metal pick if you want. Don't do that. Okay, don't break it. Make sure you get the right O-ring matched. And that is this one right here. Yes. So now, before I do that, let me clean off as much of the old Loctite as I can. What I'm going to do is grab a metal brush and scrape up as much of the old Loctite as I can. Back with my metal brush. And I'm just going to scrape off Loctite from the threads. And that's good enough. Now, let's try and remove any Loctite from the inside here that flaked off. There you go. All right, so now let me remove, actually before I do that, so I don't forget, take the new O-ring, put a little grease on him, and put him in. <clears throat> Slide him over, and there he goes. All right. Next, we're gonna change the seal on one of the seal heads. There's two seals in here, right? What I am gonna do, just to make sure I get all the flakes Loctite in here, I'm gonna take one of these little brushes Right. Strip out what I can to clean the threads in here. Let's 
do this one more time and see if we come out even better. Oh, it's looking real clean in there. Good. One last thing. Perfect. Now, we take out this piston first. There's two O-rings. One O-ring on the outside and one and two, I believe, O-rings on the inside. One of them is a U-cup, which is going to be a little bit more challenging. All right. So as far as the outside one, let's grab that plastic pick. What did I do with that plastic pick? And what did I do with that? There's that plastic pick. Let's take this guy out for now, since he's the easy one. Match him up. That has got to be this guy here. Yes, he is. Old one, new one. Oops, what am I doing? There he is. And he's clean enough on the outside. And we put this guy in, just like that. Okay. Now, the challenge. We got to go inside and take out the seals that are on the inside over here. I'm going to let the camera cool off. I will be back. Okay, next we are going to take out the quad ring and the U-cup from the inside of this piston head. All right, first we're gonna start with the quad ring. Quad ring is in the middle. Having a pick with an angle is gonna help out over here. All right, so we're gonna dig into it and we are going to push him out. And there he goes. Try to get him easier on the bottom. Yes, I can. Oop. Quad ring is out. Let's match him. It's gotta be this guy here. Yes, he is. So. Put this guy on the side. Next, the U-cup. Now the U-cup's at the bottom over here. Now one thing with the U-cup, it's positional. In other words, it's not like a quad ring where you could just put them in or a regular seal that you just put them in in any single which way or form. There's a top and a bottom. And I believe the cup part goes on the bottom. That's what we're gonna try and find out now. Get off from here. Oh, I can't. Let's go here and there he goes. Try to keep him intact. Yes. So if you notice, there's a flat part on top and the cup part on the bottom. So the cup part on the bottom installs facing the bottom of the head over here. All right. So let me put that aside. This is obviously the replacement for this one. Now. Let me just clean the inside of this guy a little bit. Not that he really needs it, but since I'm here, since we're going through all this work, why not? Okay. Now, to put the new quad ring in and the new U cup in. So, this can be a bit of a challenge with the quad ring, right? And you want to make sure when he goes in, he is not twisted, just like the other one, right? So I'm going to try him from the top first. And basically, what I'm going to do is grab my flat pick. If you have a flat pick, this should help. And try and fit him in his seat first. Nope, not in that seat. In the other seat. Huh. Huh. There you go. And now, is he in? Nope, he popped out. Huh. There you go. So he's in one side. Now that he's in one side, we're going to try and tuck him in all the way around. Nope, he's in the wrong seat. No, he's in the right seat above. Okay, that works great then. So basically, what I'm going to do now is 
once you get one side of them tucked in, at that point, it's just a question of getting the rest of them tucked in, right? He's going to want to go in there. It's going to be a little bit challenging. Sometimes they'll pop right in. Sometimes internal seals like this could be a bit of a pain. There you go. Got most of them in. Now just this little corner here. Hmm. There we go. Quad ring is in and he is not twisted. Next, our U seal. Okay, so again, the flat part goes, faces this flat part above. The, the, the cup part faces the bottom. So this one should be relatively easy. Put him in his spot. Should be able to just use our fingers, although he is a pretty stiff seal. I mean, real stiff. Make sure he doesn't twist. That side's in, that side's in, and boom. He's not sitting right. Make sure he is sitting right. Right now, he is not sitting right. Now he is sitting right. There we go. And both seals are in. Okay. As far as these guys here, what we can do is just pop them out, clean them out if you want to. Really, there's not much to clean out in here anyway, right? So just some old grease, which we're going to end up packing with grease anyway. All right. So put this guy back in, and we put this guy back in. Boom. Just like that, the rest of this is clean. So now we have to put this guy back onto here. And we're gonna have to mount this guy on the clamp. I got the shaft back in the clamp, tighten him down. Now we wanna put the head back onto the shaft. If you try and force it in like this, wow, he went in pretty easy. Okay, well, sometimes they don't go in that, that's pretty concerning actually. Sometimes they don't go in that easy. In fact, you really shouldn't do them like this because you take a risk of actually uh, damaging the rings inside because this is a sharp edge and that's why they made this tool, right? So the way this would typically work is we take the tool, we put it in and it's perfectly flush at the edges. And since this is tapered down, we put the head on and then we easily put them through just like that. Okay. And he is done. Again, you don't technically need this. It's just a safer way of doing it to ensure that you don't damage the, the, the seals, the quad ring and the U-cup, okay? So now we have to put this screw back on. In order to do that, we wanna make sure this is clean, right? I'm gonna put a little bit of alcohol on each side over here just to make sure that there's no grease on it. Then we're gonna put Loctite red, you can use 271, 272, don't matter. Okay. Lock tight on here. Blow on him. Make sure he falls on all threads. If you blow on him, it'll evenly coat all the way around. And sink in the actual threads. Okay, then we'll take them and screw them in by hand first. Always by hand first. All right, until you can't do them anymore. Then use a wrench to tighten them down. Okay, and then we're going to use a crow's foot and a torque wrench because he has to get torqued down to 5.7 newton meters to play it safe. I have my 12 millimeter crow's foot on the torque wrench and we are going to torque him down to 5.7 newton meters. There we there. And I said 5.7 is right. 
There we go, 5.7 even. And our air spring is rebuilt. Next, we're gonna put them back into the upper. Next, we need to assemble everything. So first, we're gonna grab a little bit of grease. And we're gonna coat the inside of the tube. All right, don't put too much grease over here, just a little bit. Now we're gonna grab a lot of grease. We're gonna coat the upper piston head. All right, coat the shaft here since I'm here, all the way around. Coat the shaft here. Put a good amount of grease everywhere to make this nice and slippery. The more slippery, the better. All right. Here it doesn't really matter on this thing. What matters on the shaft. There we go. And on this guy here. And on this shaft. Make sure he's always collecting oil. And then we're going to put a good amount of grease on this head here. Okay. Cool. Now that we're all greased up, we're going to take the spring and roll it in there. Now make sure this guy's all the way up and stick him in. You do not want them down here. You don't. You do not want to start this with space in between the top of the spring and the head over here, or else you get a lot of negative pressure. So, put this guy in just like that. All right now, we're going to clean the excess grease from here. Okay. Actually, we don't really need grease. He's going to get oil. But anyway, thin coat. So now we need to put in our retaining clip. All right, take this guy and just tuck him in until he falls in his seat, just like that. So now we should be able to push him back and forth. And if you notice, all the spring pressure comes down. Right? There is no pulling back up. If you leave space between the top of the air spring and the head, the other piston head, it'll want to pull back. Right, So we're good. That takes care of that side. Now let's finish the upper part and close it up. As for the cap, the air cap, right? So we got tokens in this guy. right? So there's nothing really to clean under here outside of taking out some oil, but there is a seal right here that we need to replace. And we actually going to grab this guy. Gonna take him, pop him out, find his replacement, which should be this guy here. Nope. Definitely this guy here. Put a little bit of grease on it and pop him back in. Ta da Done. Take this guy, and that guy's done. We are done with the head. Let's clean the threads out real well. Put a little bit of grease, just a thin coat, on the outside. All right. Put. Oh, we're gonna have to put oil, twenty weight oil, on the inside just a little bit. We're going to need, uh, I'm going to need my smaller syringe. I will be back. I have my smaller syringe. Can measure up to five millimeters, basically, or milliliters. We need three milliliters to put on the inside at the top. Okay, I'm just going to use the oil that's already in here. It's 
So, oops, I got air in there. Great. Let's do that again. Four, and now let's pump out till three. And that's three right there. And we're going to take this and we're going to put it on the inside in here. All right. And now we are going to close him off. Get a little grip. Always by hand first. Always by hand first. To make sure you feel it, you do not want to strip this guy. Okay. Can't do it by hand anymore. Or at least without the socket. Okay. This guy, tighten him down. There we go. Okay. Now we got to torque him down. So I have my torque wrench. We set him to 24 newton meters. I'm gonna have to change the battery on this thing. In order to make my life a little bit easier, get a little bit more grip on this table. I'm gonna put a towel underneath him. This is gonna be a weird angle for me. Let's put this guy in. Okay. Keep it straight. Push it down. 24.1. Technically, it should be 24.8, but I can live with that. I'm not too worried about it. Done. That is it for the air spring. So from this point on, if you didn't want to work on the damper, you could just move forward with the installation of the bottom basically, right? So, um, which I will get into later. But in our case, we're gonna be working on the damper next. Okay, now to service the damper side, right? So for starters, I wanna make sure everything's on the open position, right? So turn the compression knob counterclockwise all the way to the end, turn the low speed compression counterclockwise all the way to the end, right? So then I'm gonna take a two and a half millimeter and we're gonna take out the knob. Now this can be a little stiff, you're going to have to hold on to this black knob, the low compression knob, until he unscrews. Okay, and we got him. All right. Oh. Boy, he's real gritty in there. Okay. Take out the screw. Now the knob should come out. There we go. All right. So this knob should also come out. Yep, a lot of dirt in there. We will clean him. Actually, you know what? Let's clean him now. In fact, clean this whole area now. See, there's some dirt on the inside. So this way we could avoid getting dirt inside because we're going to open this whole thing up. Okay. Might save us a headache later by taking care of this guy now. Okay. And so we don't forget these guys later. We will get these guys out of the way. Wow, that's a lot of dirt on the inside. Amazing how dirt manages to get inside everything. Spray him. Make sure to get them on the inside. Come on.
Good enough there. Let's clean the outer edges. And this guy seems to actually let's go clean the inside in here, make sure there's nothing around the the edges, at least the corners. This guy's clean. And let's make sure that this guy's cleaned on the inside as well. And done. All right, these two guys are clean. Let's take the screw, clean the threads, and put them on top. So basically just keep him as a mechanism just like that on the side. All right, clean up this mess. Next, we need to open them up. To do that, once again, we need that 26 millimeter non-chamfered bolt, right? Flat edge. This guy here. Be careful, again, it's gonna be very slippery. Not exactly the best option for this. See what I mean? If you have a chamfered edge. Actually, make my life easier here. He was in there. No way that was 25 newton meters. Okay, come on. Okay. Hopefully the camera doesn't overheat. Do this by hand. Yes, I can. And that is our damper. Okay. Uh, first, I'm going to clean the inner tube before dismantling this thing. Okay. And look at that. Interesting. Fox was right for this particular fork. I'm glad I got both sets. So uh, I'm gonna let the camera cool off. I'm gonna clean the inside of this tube. Same thing like before, basically. Just uh, take some alcohol, take a paper towel, squish them down there, push them to the other side, and force them out with a towel, and it'll be clean on the inside. And then we'll work on taking apart the damper. All right, I'll be back. So this is a 2021 a fork a Fox Fit4 uh, factory fork, right? And they made a couple of changes with the 2021. They're actually much simpler to service the damper. Previously, and maybe later versions too, I'm not sure, they had like multiple seals that needed to be changed up here. The nice thing with this particular version, or at least this particular year, is the only thing that really needs to get changed is the uh, rebound head seals, another seal on the inside of the rebound shaft. If you want, this is an option in my opinion, you could change the bladder. And then there's only one more seal on the control knob. That's it. There are no other seals in here. So you really don't need to open up the shim stack or anything like that. Unless you want to change the bladder, then you would open up and expose the shims, right? But ultimately, you could only work on the bottom. Again, this seal up here, all it does is stop oil from leaking out. There's no real pressure on it per se, right? Or friction on it, I should say, there is pressure. All the friction is on these seals down here, basically. Well, at least the seals in here and the seal in there. So um, ultimately, it makes it much simpler to service than your typical Fox fork, right? So your fork might be a little bit different, or at least your damper might be a little bit different. I'm not 100% sure you need to look into that, but the plan for me is as I come across these different dampers, I'll be doing services on them and videos, I should say. All right, so let's get into servicing this damper. All right, so I had cleaned out the inside of the damper tube on the upper, okay, and I'm gonna put this on the side, and next we're gonna work on the damper itself. So, for the damper, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is 
clean the outside with alcohol and get as much grease off of it as possible, okay? Because we are going to need to put it in clamps and we want the surface to be as non-slippery as possible. So we are going to need a vise and we are going to need clamps, right? Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so next we're going to put, I'm going to do this upside down so you guys could see it. I'm going to put the um, damper in a clamp. Tie it down. Okay, and then I'm going to take a 19 millimeter. All right, there's little edges on the bottom and I'm going to turn it counterclockwise to loosen it. the rest by hand. Now, theoretically, memory serves me correct. Although this is a different version of the fit for damper. Again, the seal head is different than your typical damper. Your typical damper head looks like, where are you? Typical damper head looks like that. Okay. So this is a different head, which means I will be needing this kit. Next, I'm going to open this up. We're going to take out all the oil. So I should be able to take out all the oil from this side. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. There we go. It's uh, definitely discolored. Okay. I'll let this guy drain. I'm going to clean this guy off so it doesn't drip everywhere. All right. And there's a couple of, there's a seal here that we're going to have to change and we're going to change the whole uh, damper head. Okay. I'll let the camera cool down while this empties out and I will be back. Okay. First things first, we need to clean the shaft, right? Let's take this guy. So this is the dial end. We're going to take the, the rebound head, whatever you want to call this. And we're going to bring them about an inch from the end. And then we're going to clean the shaft. So you can be free of grease in order to put them in a clamp. Now we're going to need a nine millimeter hole for the clamp. Okay. It's in there. Yes, he is in there. Okay. Then we're going to take a 12 millimeter wrench. Now we might just going to have to get it clamped down harder. We might need heat over here. Yep, it looks like we're going to need heat. So there is an O-ring that we're going to need to replace anyway. Let's take him out now. Yeah. Okay. That's the old O-ring. We're going to replace him in a bit. Then we're going to need a torch. Uh, just put heat on him for about five seconds just to loosen him up. It's got Loctite in there. That should be enough. Let me make sure this guy's clamped down well. Now let's give him a shot. And this should be counterclockwise. Yep, there he goes. All right. So you do not want to replace that seal if you need to apply heat because you're just going to burn your new seal. All right, so. Yeah. There we go. Put him aside. I'll take this guy out. Ta-da. And there's a rebound rod. Or at least our pin adjuster, actually, not a rebound rod. Okay, so next let's clean your remaining lock. 
Loctite from in here. Actually, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out this head just like that. Okay, so the open part faces down, okay, towards the top part. Seal at the bottom faces towards the dials, right? I'm going to put this guy on the side. I'm going to take this guy out. Okay, it's got a leaking oil at the bottom. And what I'm going to do so I'm going to grab a little brush and try and clean out whatever remaining flakes of Loctite there are in there. I'll be back in a second. Actually, they're right here. So, that one should do it. And we're good. Now let's grab this guy here. Thin him out a little bit. Put him in. This one around. And we should be good. Yep. And we're good. So, put this guy back down. Let's clean this guy here, the threads at the bottom. Do I have my brush here? No, I don't. I'm going to go get my little brass brush and scrape off the Loctite residue left over here. I will be back. Okay, so I cleaned out the threads best I could. Next, on the rod at the top, there is an O-ring here. We're gonna take a plastic, I mean, you could take a metal one really, but I got a plastic one, it's a little bit safer. These are pretty soft metals. And we're gonna dig in here and replace this O-ring. There we go. Put this guy on the side. Let's find a replacement O-ring. It's really small, and that's this guy right here. Yes. Okay. Take on your O-ring. Put a little grease on him, and we are going to slide him back on. There we go. So he is done. As for the rebound shaft, so this is the rebound knob over here, right? You should be able to turn this, uh, this screw and hear the clicks. And you should be able to count them. You hear the clicks? So there should be about 20 or so clicks that you should be able to hear. But the whole point is, make sure that this guy's threaded all the way down to the end, and then back them off until you hear the first click. Right there. That's the first click. Okay, about eighth of a quarter turn, somewhere in there. So this guy is now set. Next, we put in the new uh, rebound piston, basically. Now to do that, we're going to need a bullet, okay, which fits in here. Again, it's going to make it easier to get past the quad seals that are inside the new uh, the, the the new head, right? And as we said, the open part at the bottom faces down and the sealed part faces up, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of grease on this guy here. This way we'll make sure we grease the insides as we put them in. Nice and easy. There we go. Done. Next, we're going to put in our rebound rod or our dial, All right? But first, we're going to put a little bit of Loctite on the threads. Make sure the threads are clean. Actually, not those threads, these threads in here. Gotta make sure there's no grease on these threads, right? I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite, not too much. In fact, that's probably too much. Okay. Blow on him. So he sits nicely all the way around. I'm gonna take this guy, we're gonna put him in. Right, and we're going to screw them in by hand first, always by hand first. All right. Okay. Now when we get to the bottom, technically you should be torqued down to 
3.4 newton meters. Oh, wait a second, I do have a 12. What am I talking about? Here. So, hold on. Probably forgot I had a 12. So I'm gonna take a 12 millimeters crow foot and your torque wrench, and just to play it safe, considering these are relatively sensitive spots, 3.4. Yeah. 3.5, 3.4. Great. Let's go all the way around here. Oop, I gotta tighten the down clamp or tighter on the clamp. Okay. There we go. 3.46, good enough. All right. Take him out of here. Now, that part is done. We have a new seal on here. All right. Next, we're gonna test it. I shouldn't have pulled him out quick, quick. We're gonna test the dials, make sure he's working right, right? So first, I'm gonna clean the rebound knob. Make sure it's all clean. All right. Then there's an indented part over here, right where my thumb is. You'll see it on yours, right? So we're gonna put this guy on and make sure the screw goes in on the indented part. That is a two millimeter if memory serves me correct. Yes, it is. I'm gonna screw this guy in. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Yep. So I'm good. Sounds right. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, nineteen. Cool. Nineteen twenty, basically. We are good to go. Rebound knob is working. Now, the rebound knob on the side. Now we had taken out the seal from the tap, right? I'll be honest. Yep, this has got to be the new seal. And we're going to put the new seal back on. Next, we're gonna turn them over and we are gonna change out this split ring in here. Use your fingers to open them up. Easy enough. Put the old one aside and take the new one and we put the new one in. And the new one is proving to be expanded out of the damn case, great. Hopefully this doesn't give me issues. Damn, he stretched, I mean, he fits, but if you see he's doing that, basically try and squeeze them together in here. Do not try and squeeze them together out here because you actually might damage him doing that, right? So uh, we'll fit it in basically and try and make it work as we fit it in basically. So that takes care of our damper. All right, next or a damper, a rebound rod. Next, the big question becomes the damper body. Where did I put the damper body? This guy here. So at the end of it all, to me personally, this is optional. I'm gonna do it, but again, this is an optional piece. Technically, we could fill this with oil right now, put the damper inside, fill it with oil, bleed it best we can, right? Put the damper inside, put the damper inside, screw it down, torque it, Screw it down, torque it down, and then open up the other end, take out the, the dial from here and start bleeding and then close the dial and you're pretty much good to go, right? But I will be opening this guy up. Let's take apart the top part of the damper. First, we need to remove the retaining clip on the inner part of this collar, right? 
Now you'll notice there's a flat side and an angled side. We want to go under the angled side. Angled side always to remove, flat side always to put in. All right. So that takes care of the clip. Put that on the side. And we will take care of the washer. Put that on the side. Keep everything in order. Okay. So now we need to push this back in order to get it away from the actual tube itself, right? Well, at least push this back. There we go. To alleviate some of the pressure. Next, we have to take out a really small retaining clip, okay? It's very hard to see by eyes. Uh, you're gonna need some kind of magnification uh, unless you got super, super good eyesight up close, right? So on the ring, there's two areas that are indented and you're gonna need a really small head, right? A small screwdriver head or an extremely small pick. And like Fox recommends, you're better off removing this retaining clip by following one of the indentations in the metal and getting the clip from the back part. So let's say the clip's like this, the two points where they sort of uh, nearly meet would be the front, the opposite of that would be the back, right? So don't try and take these things out using one of the ends. Try and take it out via the opposite from the ends, right? By putting a tool inside one of these indentation areas, right? This is gonna be real tricky. I also recommend a magnet. So this way, if this thing pops out, flies out, it'll fly into the magnet if all goes well, right? So in here is a little indentation area. Crazy magnet. Let me try and get this, scoop this guy in there. Oh. Okay. Nope. There we go. Done. On the magnet. This little guy here. Uh, challenging. Make sure you have a really sharp, fine point pick or a very, very small screwdriver. Uh, flat, a flat head, uh, a flat driver head, basically, right? Very, very small. So we wanna take this guy out and we're gonna put him on the side. All right, keep the magnet here. So then we're gonna use the screw for the cap that we took out earlier. It literally screws into here, right? So we're gonna put this guy in here, screw him in a little bit, and then we're gonna pick up the whole mechanism. Now watch out, there's gonna be a little ball. You don't want it to fly out. So it's over here. right there, okay? So this is how we would bleed, the, this is how we're gonna bleed basically. Um, the, 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 what should we call it in the end, the, the damper in the end, right? So we need to remove, replace this seal over here, okay? I'm gonna take this bearing and spring and I'm gonna put them both on a magnet put all three of them because they're real small parts, right? So now I'm gonna take out this pick over here, uh, this seal over here. Uh. Uh. Ow. I hate these little ones, especially the little hard ones. Uh. Get out. And make sure my camera, keep on wanting to pull away from me. What the? Is he? Come on, man. Six hours later. I need something that's a little bit more grippy, guys. Sorry, but never mind that the gloves are sliding around everywhere. There we go. There we got him. Ta da! Finally, hail the conquering hero. Ta 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 ta. -da. All right, let's set this guy aside for now. Let the camera cool off, we'll be back. Next, we're gonna pull out the bladder. Uh, in order to pull out the bladder, what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen the top cap, okay? 26 millimeter. We're just gonna loosen it. 
You don't have to pull the whole thing out, just create a little bit of separation. When we create the separation, we should be able to just take the bladder and pop it. Oop, there goes that. That was unexpected. And pop it out, right? So, all right. There we go. The bladder's popped out. So now we have one whole piece. We got the old bladder and we have a new bladder that we will replace it with. So in order to swap out the bladder, if you notice, they're not shaped the same way top to bottom. Most bladders are basically identical, but this one actually has shape. The narrow part goes downwards, the wider part goes upwards, right? So this is the new bladder, just the old bladder. Take out the ring and put this guy in here like that. All right, and this guy will be good to go. We'll put him on the side. So now let's put the new bladder on, right? So again, wide part goes on top, narrow part goes on the bottom. So this is the top, this is the bottom, right? Now the best way we could do this, or the most surest way we could do this, we will open up the upper body. Now be careful here, be very careful. Your shim stack is under here, right? And they might stick on this piece here, on the axle part when you're taking them out, right? So you wanna slowly open it up, look underneath, and make sure there's no shim sticking here, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, this portion where your shims are right there, and we're gonna put it on the side. So then we're gonna take our bladder. We're gonna put a little bit of grease on the inside tip down here, and a little bit of grease over here. You don't wanna kill it with grease, just a thin film, very thin film, right? Cool. Now that we grease that, again, this is the top. We want this white part to end up up here. We want to cover this. It wants to, it needs to install into this seat, right? So we're going to take this guy, pop him in. Do it this way. All right, and then just twist him on top. He'll want to go in right about there, just like that. Okay, so he is now in. Now we're going to take him and screw him back on to the bottom part. Be very careful, don't drop this thing. Again, your shims are in here, right? We're gonna do it by hand. Be very careful here. And just screw them in by hand until you can't screw them anymore, right? Just like that, keep on going, keep on going until he locks down. Then we're gonna put him in the clamps and we're going to use that 26 millimeter clamp them down torque them down best i could find is eight and a half newton meters all right there we go so now we need to lock in the lower ring right and the way we're going to do that actually let me take this out is we're going to put the bladder in the clamp. We're going to have the clamp just hold this portion of the upper ring, right? We don't want to lock it down in there. There's a reason for that. All right, so we're just going to close this. We're going to sink this guy in. And we're just going to close him tight enough where he could spin around nice and freely, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to pull down on the damper from the bottom, which is gonna sink the, 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 the housing enough where the washer will go in, right? So now the washer's in, and if we want, we can take, how much we call it to test it, tuck it in there, uh, pick. So then we're gonna grab our, oops, there's a flat part and an angled part. We're gonna use the flat part first. Okay, in order to sink it in. So again, 
the whole goal is to get pull down on the on 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 the, the which we call it, or push down on the on the damper body in order to stretch it and give us space to put the retaining and ring in right there's a little area where the retaining ring needs to seat into and i'm nearly there and oop, nearly there and we are there all right if i take it out so again we don't want to lock down the, 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 the damper into the clamp. We just want to hold this ring. And then when it holds onto it, we could pull or push down on the whole body, which will stretch the rubber, sink it into the ring where the washer will sit in. And then we put the retaining clip in its seat in order to keep the whole mechanism uh, together. All right. So that's all that needs to be done for the damper body. There are no seals in here. Uh, it's just if you want to replace the rubber housing, basically. You don't need to unless it's damaged, dried, right, or if it's overstretched, warped. So, again, all this is optional in my opinion, right, as far as uh, performing. So, next, we will move forward with a complete assembly. So, now we are going to take the compression knob, we're going to put it back in, but without the spring and the, the, the ball, right? Uh, we're just going to use this to fill up. We're just going to install this in order to be able to fill up the, the cart, the damper with oil. Okay. So we're just going to pop it in just like that. Okay. And then we're going to turn this upside down and we're going to fill it with oil, except I'm going to put it inside the clamp to make my life easier. Now in here, we're going to put 5W weight, or 5 weight, 5WT I should say. Ow, ow, that hurt. What was that? Boy, these people were messing around with some serious tape. Holy cow. Okay. Right, this guy up, tear him off, and let's say so. I don't make too much of a mess. I'm gonna put this guy underneath for now. So what I'm gonna do? <gasps> Shit! Thought I was if we're looking at the camera. Great. <laughs> uh, I overfilled them. In fact, I'm going to empty some of them out. It doesn't need to be that full from the get-go. Okay. Try not to make a mess. First thing I did was make a mess. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to squeeze on the bladder. Okay, see, we got air bubbles coming out. You should be able to see them. Massage the bladder. The whole idea is to get the air bubbles from the bottom to come out and around the shims. So what I'm going to do next is take him off. Okay, to make it even easier to massage the bladder. I want to remove as much air from here as possible. Okay, see how much it's sunk in? That's sunk in a lot. Like that literally sunk in about, poof, over an inch, maybe an inch and a half. It's just gonna make bleeding, <clears throat> it's just gonna make bleeding later easier. Boy, I'm getting hungry. Okay, spin this guy around, it's getting oily. Make my life easier here. Okay, just twist 
twist them around. All right. Well, that looks good for now. It's not moving anywhere. All right. So now I'm going to put them back in the vise. I'm going to fill them up again near the top. Okay, it's not at the top, but he's pretty, oh no, still got a way to go. Right around there. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any air coming out. There's air in there, trust me. I don't see any air coming out right now. So, next, we're going to close up the damper. All right, now we're going to install the damper rod into the damper body. We need to make sure, when doing so, that the split ring is held tightly in its seat and help guide it and keep it there when we put it in, right? And then we're going to take the seat, the, the seal, or the seal, the piston, and bring it down as quick as possible once we know this is securely inside the damper and we're going to screw it down by hand first right so basically first i'm going to put this guy in make sure that he is sitting inside oops caught my gloves for crying out loud there we go okay he is now inside now i'm going to take this guy oops you know what i think he popped out no he didn't okay now we're going to take this guy and we're going to tighten him down by hand. All right. Yep, he's definitely tightening down. Okay, as far as I go by hand, let me take the 19 millimeter. Let me make sure. Where is he? There he is. Okay, now let's torque him down. Crow's foot, 19 millimeter, 6.2 newton meters. There we go. Our damper shaft is in. Now we bleed. Get this guy out of here before I spill him. So first, let's clean them up with alcohol and we start the bleed process. So now we're gonna bleed the system, right? For starters, we remove the compression dial. That exposes the entire inside. We're gonna put that on the side, right? Next, we're gonna need a syringe. We're gonna have to put some oil in the syringe. Grab their, oh, are you kidding me? All right, it reached, good. One last thing. We're gonna need some oil in the syringe. There's too much oil. Actually, let me get rid of the air that's in there. I don't like the syringe, but it does the job and it fits nicely. Okay. All right. That's done. Take out all the air, as much air as possible. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this, uh, the well, this side and and, and and completely enclose the hole over here with it, right? There we go, just like that. Okay, so you see, we're gonna use suction now. And I am back, I changed the tip. I used the tip that the actual syringe came with, Let's see if it'll give me a better seal. So basically right now, I'm just, again, take your time over here. It's worth the extra time and effort. You want to basically be able to remove every air bubble possible, right? So I'm inflating the bladder, I'm squeezing it. I will say that RockShox system is a billion times better than this system. This sucks. This sort of reminds me of that RockShox Charger 1.0, so which was a pain in the ass system. 
we are getting closer. So basically again, we're just pushing down and up, getting flow through the system, trying to extract all the air bubbles. Expand the bladder, compress it. Do the same with the rebound rod. Good. Right now we are looking good. I haven't seen a bubble. I would say that this bleed is done. One more time. Out, oh, all the way down. Okay. Now we will remove our syringe. Make sure it's covered just in case there's pressure. Okay. Now we want to make sure this is topped off, right? Which it looks topped off right now. There's some bubbles on it. Let's tap it off a little bit more and basically wipe off any bubbles. There we go. So now we need to put our control back in, but we need to put the spring and the ball inside it, right? So first go to the spring. You know what? I'm going to put a little bit of uh, grease on it, just a little bit to keep it in there. Make life a little bit easier. Put a little bit of grease in the spring. Take the spring, put it inside. Like that. Now I take a little bit of grease, put it on the ball. Inside. Nope, oh, squish this all the way in. Okay, so now we're going to want to take this and put it inside, but we want to make sure that the ball doesn't pop out, right? So we're going to have to help it. Put a little bit more grease on that ball. Okay, just like that. Goes to the bottom, boom. And he's all the way in. All right, got our screw on top. We're gonna have to take out our screw. And put the screw on the side. Next, we're going to empty out the inside, clean it all up, and then we install in the retaining ring. This is what the oil is supposed to look like before it was pretty brown. Okay, clean this up inside. Inside here is where the retaining ring goes. I'm going to put it back on the clamp in order to put that in there because this guy's going to be a little tricky. It's really small. Just let's see if we get in here and clean all the crap from inside. All right, now we take our retaining clip. Again, there's a couple of indented spots. In fact, let me take it out so we can see. Maybe you can see it on camera. What we want to do, so over here, for instance, and right at the other side of it, there's a couple of indented spots on the inside. So you want the two ends and the back to face one of those indented spots, right? So I'm going to put it this way. Basically, put these guys in first, and then this guy's gonna go towards up. Oh, didn't work out like it planned. 
Come on. Grab a pick. Tuck him in one side, tuck him in the other side, and make sure he's all the way down. All right, I got the glasses so I can see better. Basically, you're just tucking him in. And I think he's tucked in. Yeah. He's in there. Cool. Last thing. Next, we're going to put this guy back in the upper tube. So now we're going to put the damper back into the upper. Right? And it's basically the reverse. So we changed the seal out here. All our seals that we could change have been changed. Now we're just going to take this guy, put him in by hand, screw him in. Oop. If he's tight, then back him out. He should thread in very easily. Back him out until you feel a click. And then back them in, or thread them in. There we go. Come on. Getting harder. Get a rag. Want to make, make less noise. <clears throat> Actually, turn this guy around. Okay, now we're going to use socket, and then we're going to torque them down 28 newton meters. Uh, sorry, 24.8 newton meters. I think I write those things down. Yep, 24, so good enough. All right. There we go, 24.9. What do you know? Okay, next we have to put in our controls. All right. So remember, we had cleaned the compression knob, low speed compression knob, clean them real well, clean inside the crevices all over the place, right? This one had a lot of dirt on it. Now, what we want to do. Unlike Fox, I mean Rock Shocks, this one we have more control as far as how we could install it. First, we want to test it. So this is all the way open, just like I left it, right? So now what we can do is take this guy and bring him down here. So we have close and open. Or this is a preference thing. Really, there is no right way or wrong way. I mean, you can put it upside down. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. Nice stuck. Great. Come on, I got a lot of these stupid gloves. There we go. So you could put them like that. I mean, there's different ways you could do this, right? Whatever is like more comfortable for you, All right? You do it like that and you're good. So good enough. So then we have our low speed compression, right? And basically we could put this guy since he's all the way turned off. If I click him, he turns on, right? So take the screw. Two and a half, Allen, thread them in. Finger tight. Don't want to go too tight and make it impossible to turn around. Just finger tight. Hold them. There we go. So I should still be able to freely move this. One. Two and one, two. Well, this guy's always going to be tight. Two, three, four. Yep, there we go. So he freely turns. All right. That is the rest of the damper. It is done. So now the only thing left is to put the boot on. Right? So, um, 
in order to do that, we this would be the last part of the process and it would be the same whether if you decided to do just the air spring and the lowers, the damper and the lowers or all three of them combined, right? So what's coming up next is basically general, the first process, the ending of the first process, right? So I will be back. Okay, let's take it home. Lower boot has been cleaned. Everything's looking great. Time to put in the seals and the wipers, right? So I've had the seals soaking. I'm gonna take them one at a time and I'm gonna put them right at the base, nice and flush. Seat them nicely, that's one. Make sure it's not folded. And this is two. Okay. That is ready. Next, let's put this aside since we're gonna need this oil for the lowers. Next, we put in the wipers. I put a thin coat of grease on the outside to make it easier to put them in. All right. So we might need a mallet, we might not need a mallet. With rock shocks, I never need a mallet. Let me put this down so it doesn't make as much noise. The nice thing is, is that I should be able to. Oh, I'm gonna need a mallet. I don't have enough leverage, I gotta put it on the floor. Let's see what it looks like. I think it needs a little bit more, like literally just a hair. One little tap. Yep, that did it. So I like them flush. I don't like them when they're in, right? I like them when they're perfectly flush. So let's take this guy, we do the same thing. Put him inside our tool. Here, Let's see if I can do it by hand. Nope. Ooh, just a tad more. Nope, that's looking good. Actually, this guy on the left could go down just a little bit. I don't think it really matters, but I'm going to give him a little tap. Okay. Cool. So now, clean this out of here. Now I put grease in the cup, All right? So, strand butter, sacolium, whatever you like. And I try and fill up the indentation, basically. Okay, there's a, it's concave. I try and fill up that area. All right. So basically put it in there and wipe it like that and try and make it even all the way around. Just like that. Cool. So we're ready to combine the lower and the upper. So first, I'm gonna take the new sag ring and put it on the air side. Remember, the air side's over here. So again, uh, point of reference is serial number goes to the back, crown faces the front, right? So now what I also do is, to make life easier, take out the springs Put them on first, All right? So then I'll take these guys and the mining camera man frame, not a frame, and basically try and get one side a little bit in, and then the other side just jiggling in. Oops. Sometimes they go in right away, sometimes they don't. There we go. 
All right, so now I put the springs back on. Make sure they're on all the way around. Okay. Come on, bonehead. I've got the stupid camera in my way. <laughs> Can't see. Doing this half blind. Okay. All right. We have our lowers and uppers attached. So now we got to put oil into the boots below. Now, first things first, if you can see that well, we want open space in here. We don't want the rods sticking out. You won't be able to put oil in, okay? So if they're sticking out, just push them back in a little bit. Don't take them all the way out, obviously, right? So we have our damper side and our spring side. So this is a float 34, 130 millimeter. So anything from 130 to 160, we will need 10 millimeters or 10 cc's or 10 millimeters, same thing, of oil on the spring side. On the damper side, all 32 and 34 fit four forks need 15. So this is a fit four. So 15 milliliters on the damper side. Start with that one first. Right there, 15 millimeters, or milliliters. Let's see if I have enough in here. Oh, I'm gonna throw it on you. Ah, great. Not what I wanted. Hmm. I have enough just for one. Take out the air bubble from in there. Make sure we got a clean 15 millimeter, milliliters. There we go. The 15, nope, a little bit more than 15. So let me bring him down. Nope, now it's a little bit. Mm. No, that's good. That's 15. Cool. So we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put him in, and we will inject. Oops, should have put that in the frame. Shit. Okay, so that takes care of that guy. Now, and again, we're using 20 weight here, by the way, right? So let's put a little bit in here. And let's fill this guy. And for the air side, we will be adding in 10. Fortunately, I sucked a whole bunch of bubbles in here somehow. Um, Okay, where's the 10 marker? Oh, wow, a little bit less. Good enough, that's time. So now we're gonna put this guy in here and inject. Cool. Now we're gonna close these guys up. Swish them together. Cool. Let's get rid of all this. Let's clean up this mess. So now we need the bolts. Which are right here. So we have the damper side, which is the wider side, are swapped out, put in the new uh, crush washer. Then we have the air spring side with the smaller crush washer. Okay, so this is the air spring side. Screw this guy in first. Yeah, this is the damper side. What the? Oh, but it needs to stick out a little bit more. Great. There we go. You pull it out by hand, worst case scenario. If you can't get it to them, use that tool, that damper tool, to screw in and pull them out, basically. But I was able to pull them out by hand. Okay. 
There we go. Grab my sockets, 15 millimeter for the damper side. 10 millimeter, uh, 12 mil, 10 millimeter. 10 or 12, 10, yeah, 10. 10 for the air spring side. Okay. Let's just do them a little bit. Right. What the? them down. Okay, let's get our torque wrench. These don't need a lot of torque. If memory serves me correct, we're only at around, what is it? 5.7. I thought it was like 5.2 to be honest, but we weren't all that far off. Okay. Nearly there. Put them in frame. Five point seven three. Five point eight. Went a little bit overboard, but not the end of the world. Cool. Now all we have left is our rebound knob. Get our two millimeter, right? I will position it where you could see, freely see the, I'm in frame, yes. Where you could freely see the, actually there's a, yep, I was right. There's the indentation. So it's gonna be pointing straight up, right? Okay. All right, let's test it. We were all the way closed before, or all the way open. Oh yeah, we're working. Nice and smooth. Sweet. We are good. Take them back out again, all the way open, and done. Next, we will put a little bit of air in them. 50 PSI to start with. Then we'll compress them to balance them out. Make some less noise, hopefully. Okay. Take this guy out. Turn them upside down. Cycle them a few times. Don't think I'll be able to do this on the table. Maybe I will. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm definitely getting rebound. Okay. Now let's fill them up to 100. Now oh, come on. Yep, about 105. Cool. And we put in our air cap. Can't forget that. Then we set everything so it's fully open. Four clicks of low speed. Two, three, four. 
And if memory serves me correct, actually I wrote it down, 10 clicks of rebound. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we are done. We have a fully serviced box factory 34 float or float 34 fit for fork. Again, not exactly a hard job. In fact, this model, this year and model, the 2000, uh, 2021, is much easier to work on the damper side. There's much less you need to do. You do not need to open up the whole top half. In all reality, you don't need to even change out the bladder. All you would need to do is just take out the bottom shaft, the rebound shaft, take out the, the piston, change out the seals, and call it a day, and, you, and, and change out the top seal over here, because you got to take that out to bleed it anyway, right? So it's very smart design, very similar to how RockShox did it, minimal inter intervention needed uh, at the top part, right? Spring side's easy enough, really. So, and the bottoms, those are easy enough. Again, you should do them every 50 hours. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully, uh, some people out there who are a little bit intimidated by this job are able to go out there and perform it on their own. Just follow everything step by step. You shouldn't have any problems. There might be some deviations or some differences based off the year of the fork, right? So that could be a little bit different. And again, as time goes by, I plan on making more videos as I come across the different versions of these. I'll be servicing them and recording it as well, right? If you like the video, please, please press two thumbs up, actually one thumbs up, and two thumbs down if you don't like the video. Recording this in 4K60 was actually a major pita, so uh, you would not believe how many times the camera overheated. But again, there are some little details and it should make it look a little bit more flowy for you guys, right? If you wanna see more videos, press the subscribe button, hit the bell to be warned when new videos come out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I will respond to them as soon as I can. So outside of that, hope all is well with everyone. Have a great weekend and looking forward to the next video. All right. Take care. Bye.